What is up? Let's go. <clears throat> Yo, one sec. I forgot I was gonna grab a coffee. What is up? Yo, one sec. I forgot I was gonna grab a coffee. Let's go, baby. Pain. Oh, shit. I just realized this is going to mess up. Hold up. I can fix this. I can fix this. There I am. What is up, YouTube? How are we doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the stream. I don't think I'm going to have any audio issues this time. Let me, let me make sure it's balanced. Oh, yeah. That's... Oh, beautiful chef's kiss beautifully balanced anyways what is up how are we doing everybody we are probably not doing well for all angels fans another brutal loss per usual just realized i have that on in the background too uh another tough loss i i i was planning on doing a vent line tonight last night was just kind of a bonus vent line because i i couldn't fathom how awful yesterday's loss was but i got the boys waiting in discord we're about to get into it leave a like on the stream help it reach more baseball fans subscribe if you're new to the channel we do these vent lines every now and then when we're pissed off and there's been a lot to be pissed off about you know uh so we're just gonna talk about it today i got my boy max air jordan and then of course frank hop hopping on with us so uh it's gonna be a great time Sorry I'm all grainy. This is my Discord version of myself. I can't have my camera on Discord and my streaming software at the same time, but appreciate you guys all coming out. We got my boy Chris, Ethan, Cloudwing, welcome to the stream. Nah, man. Franklin P. Helmstetter, Ethan, Zach, Vicky, welcome in. Jaime, how we doing, man? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, uh, without further ado, let me uh, bring in the boys. Let's see. I'm going to... I forgot which one I named this. Hold on. I think that's the right one yes sir let me adjust one thing let me turn your guys's audio on so i can hear you let's go what is up boys how we doing yo Killing, what's man. good let's go all right so we are gathered here today to talk about a baseball team uh that we are we have the uh, misfortune of being associated with and uh yeah we we're just gonna talk some you know, talk some shit, I guess. Yeah. If that's what you want to call it. I'm trying to make it fit better, but Frank is hiding in the background. Hold on. Let me uh, fix bullying this. works. So this will hopefully help. There we go. All right, we made it. Cool. It looks good now. Just had to make sure everything look. Everybody looked good. Everybody looked pretty. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, I sent you guys over some stuff today. One thing I wanted to do real quick was start off with our pie chart of blame, I'm going to call it. There's a lot of bad to be associated with this team right now, and I just kind of want to get an idea of where we feel the blame should be, uh, where the blame should be placed. Is it on the front office? Is it on the players? Is it on the coaching staff? Is it on the bullpen, the starting rotation? There's a lot of places you could place the blame, and I just want to get an idea of where you guys are at, what you think the... Um, what you think where you think the blame should fall or the majority of the blame so if you guys want to give me a, a pie chart of blame it doesn't have to be exact percentages or anything but uh what, what do you guys think who is the most to blame and whatnot um i can take a stab at it i guess um <laughs> i i think uh well first of all let me get this out of the way because i'm pulling my shirt down on purpose so i'm trying to get all of our angels fans even more frustrated so <laughs> I decided to wear this giveaway shirt. You trying to fire up the boys from a yeah, Mariners game? I just, I just want, I just want you, you all, you all to know, this is what could be if we just made some improvements. You know, the Mariners are looking pretty good right now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I am an Angels fan. Full disclosure, <laughs> I'm an Angels fan. So this is entirely a gag. But anyways, um, I would say, man, I, I think front office is the majority of the issue. I think like just breaking down to like the our farm system so i i'd, I'd give it uh I don't know, i'd give it like 30 percent there 
Um, I think bullpen as well is a big issue. So maybe like a 15 or in that in that regard. Um, and then I think coaching staff is also a good chunk of it. Probably more of like 20% actually. Uh, and that, that extends to multiple coaches that we can definitely name later or we'll talk about. But um, that's not 100% at all. Like, so that didn't add up. But regardless, I think that's like the ratio in which I would place uh, kind of my my air my grievances there and then on top of that like our offense and has just not been it's performing as well wreck, so <laughs> yeah yeah it's a lot so i feel you bro you. where are you at max uh all right so mine's gonna get a little wild i uh it, something that i don't think like people really notice is, and it's something that i didn't really notice until like i don't know i watch a lot of sports and i like you know aside from the actual gameplay you know talking football i see the vikings thing in the back like what do you think the Vikings have in terms of employees? Like a thousand? Like, you know what I mean? Like they have a, they have a head coach. They have a, you know, that all the way from a head coach to a general manager to someone who makes sure the balls have air in them to someone who's like re doing the cleats to someone who's like, you know, like looking at every piece of film. And I don't know why, but for me, like for some reason, it just feels like the Angels don't have enough employees. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it, that might just be like you in a stadium or you go to a game. And it's like, I, like I feel like there should be, uh, like 500 employees in simply the baseball operations side of it. Um, so to start off my pie chart, 10% is going to be whoever decides to hire uh, more like people to watch film, people to be on tablets. Like I, I, the guys that we have now are doing a great job, but it just feels like I would put every dollar that I have on the fact that like the Yankees have more employees than the Angels do baseball ops wise. Right. I'm just going to go on a limb and just guess there. Yeah. Um, so that's 10% mm -hmm. to them. 25% uh, to God. If you guys are religious, uh, <laughs> this just seems like a personal vendetta. No team has been this bad this long. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to go 5% to the guy in the Mariners shirt. I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Frank. Um, yeah. You get 5% Frank because you wore that. It just feels like bad vibes. And then the rest is going to go just to, you know, I, like, I don't like blaming a specific person. I don't like blaming the players because it's like they're, I don't think they're going out there to try to lose, right? They're trying to make a living. They're trying to have a good time. Um, I just, depth is depth. Whoever, I guess that kind of falls on Perry, but like depth is definitely an issue. You can see kind of how, like, how nice our, uh, you know, our team is and like how, how good it was in April. And it's, it's something so weird that like, if you get a new car, but then you rip the hood off, it's like your, your car's cool, but like you don't have a hood. So it's like, you know, um, so I guess that kind of splits it up. It goes 10 baseball off hiring, uh, 25 God, five to Frank, and then the rest to, you know, whoever's in charge of creating depth on a baseball team. Um, I saw a really good tweet earlier saying that the angels don't have a ton of major league average guys. I'm, I'm sure you guys saw it. Yeah. Like, we just don't have a ton of guys with like four ERAs and, you know, whatever, 250 bat. Like, and that's true. We don't. We have obviously the two best players. And then there's kind of like a, there's some guys and then there's like a drop off. So whoever's in charge of depth gets the, the chunk of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel you there. I, I really feel you low key. Like, I know you, you said God won probably is kind of, a little bit of a, of a joke there but it, it really truly feels like there is some sort of being just a third party out there somewhere that is actively like i i've i've brought it up a few times as like the angels in the outfield are on strike so they're actively making this team worse like instead of you know bringing the balls yeah. into the gloves they are you know knocking them over the walls about, and stuff like that i didn't even think about that movie honestly i just like there's in, in i don't know since the season started right since our 14 game losing streak there's been something every week that can be turned into a meme, uh, whether it's Trout, you know, Seager with the bases loaded, or the tipping pitches, or the Ward and him miscommunication. Like every week, th there's a meme on this team, and right. like I don't know, it, 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 it just, I don't see that happening. We saw, it, I think, with the Mariners, some guy tried to catch a ball, went in the stand. Like that's the only one they'll probably see. For, I think it was the Blue Jays. Like that's the only meme they'll get all year. And like it seems like we have one every week. Oh, it's insane! And every time, like you think we're out of it, like yesterday, I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" Trout had a great game. He broke out of his slump. Otani was cr crushing it. Patrick or, um, Reed Detmers looked like the Reed Detmers we were promised. 
and then the bullpen blows it, and it's the most, it's a, probably the most embarrassing loss of the year. Because we have that one, the Phillies loss comes to mind, losing two of three to the Royals comes to mind, the losing two of three to the Orioles early in the season comes to mind, uh, the the walk off against the A's. There's just so many of these, like you signature just named, like, losses. Minutes. Yeah, these these are just yeah. signature losses. And I think the one thing that also like, I mean. The Angels are, like I said, if they're good, it's it's what everyone's going to hop on. And we're going to have Ben Verlander stroking them all fucking day. But then if they're bad, you get the fucking old Doyle fan, arm, whatever, Punkston yeah. Armel Doyle fan club coming out. And it's just like, what team, what team kind of has that? So, you know, it, it, it's kind of fucked up. But, I mean, we yeah. all, um, I just wanted to ask, like, because you guys, you're one's in Seattle, uh, I think, I don't, I don't know Florida. where you are. You're like all over the globe. Central uh, Florida. How, how is everyone like? I'm an Angels fan just because I live two minutes away. How are you guys? Uh, like, so, how did you guys start liking them? It was the, uh, a curse. We both grew up in. Uh, Nolan and I have known each other since we were like really, really young, and we grew up in uh, Mission great. Viejo, Mission Viejo, south of Anaheim. So that's we just went to high school with Sam right now, actually. Right. Oh wow! Okay, shout out MP. I love it. But yeah, that's yeah. that's it. I mean, I just grew up an Angel fan uh, through the highs, highs well, I got and, lows like and everything. Deep ties to the Angels. Well, cause your your parents grew up in Louisiana, right? So were they even yeah, like, baseball yeah. fans before he moved out? Um, my dad was actually like way back. Uh, the only team that people follow out there is the Astros, just because vicinity-wise, and they they didn't used to be yeah, good close. or an AL West team, so. Uh, yeah. Of course, now that's changed on both ends, but uh, yeah. So he followed the Astros, but uh, yeah, okay. no, the Angels were not on his radar. So yeah, my my dad no, worked. Uh, he sold peanuts at the stadium in the '80s, back when uh, you know Nolan Ryan was throwing no hitters every day, and you know, so he he was around in the heyday for a little bit. And you know, uh, my my uncle is a, the biggest Angels fan I've ever met. He has um, John Lackey's hat from Game Seven of the 2002 World Series. Like that shit should be in Cooperstown. Some I think he paid like ten grand for it or something, but he, he has it. I've That's held fun. it. He has nice. the lineup card from game six of the World Series, which is the night he got married. And when he planned his wedding, he was like, Well, the Angels aren't gonna be in the fucking playoffs. He doesn't need that. Yeah. Uh I don't need to have, you know, I can play in it for October. Uh um, That's so fun. Yeah, so like the greatest Angels game in history was the night of his fucking wedding, so um yeah, I, I've no, just been actually, cursed to be an Angels fan my whole no, life. No, that's actually really, like, impressive. I know I kind of sounded like I'm gatekeeping here, but now we'll take all the fans we can get. Uh, yeah. Your uncle toss, tossing peanuts, I mean, that sounds like he just, he gave you a fucking, we might want to bleep this out on the stream, but if you ever want to start a podcast called Tossing Peanuts and it's just a baseball podcast, I think your yeah. uncle just gave you the best name, you know? So they yeah. copyright that. <laughs> I mean, we already got our good morning baseball thing going with Frank and I, but it's a, it's a thought for for a future one yeah, put yeah. That in the bank. yeah it's a good it's not a bad idea um I, I i threw together like a a quick little pie chart here my main chunk of the pie is going to be 40 percent for the bullpen the the bullpen has been and i'm i'm really pissed about this because i i have videos on this fucking youtube channel going back to the off season where I'm talking about the angels having like a top five bullpen in baseball, a top three bullpen in baseball. And on paper, it looked like that. Rysel was dominant last year. Loop was the best non-closing relief pitcher in baseball last year. ERA wise, at least Ryan Tapera has been one of the better relievers over the last two years. Austin Warren looked great last year. And then we had all these other young guys coming up that I was excited about. And then all of a sudden we just can't get outs as soon as the starting pitching leaves, I've I've loved the rotation. We've always had rotation problems. Our rotation's phenomenal this year. It's good enough to make the playoffs, but the bullpen just can't win games. It's it's mind blowing to me. I don't know how it happens. I really don't with the guys we have back there. Um, yeah, no, it was weird though the, how it like because in the beginning, obviously, Rysel last year was nails like otherworldly, um, and then this year, like it you know beginning of the year, like it was, it was all right, like it was cool. And people were excited. Yeah, solid. Things were happening, and then it was like they just fell off a cliff or something. Like, and again, you can. It, I don't know enough to know what happened. Like, I don't know. It could have been the worker changed the Gatorade in the, in the uh, refrigerator. Like, I, they just all seemed to like at one point, one day, they just like went like it just all went downhill, really. So yeah, I just um, forgot how to pitch. Right. It's crazy, and all at once too. It's like. 
Loop Loop was great to start the year. I think we all loved Loop for the first month. You know, yeah. um, Rysel, I, I I still think Rysel's good. I, I don't know. I See, this is my problem with it. I feel like I, I'm going to go on to my next chunk of the pie. It's it's 20% for the coaching staff. So Jeremy Reed and, and uh, Matt Wise specifically. Matt Wise feels like, that, like the other day when he gave up the, uh, I, don't, I can't remember if it was a game tying or game winning single to Cedric Mullins. Um, same thing with the Bryce Harper home run. It feels like Matt Wise goes out there and his advice is like, hey, you're a good pitcher. You you throw 98 miles per hour. Why don't you go blow one by him? Or, you know, you just got to locate this pitch, you know, throw him an off speed, but make sure it's a strike. And that's just terrible advice. It, it, I, I don't, I, you know, obviously I'm not in the huddle. I can't tell you what they're actually saying, but whatever Matt Wise is doing, it is actively hurting this pitching staff and I, I just don't see how there's any justification to keep him around after we saw Reed Detmers go down to AAA, get coached for two games, and all of a sudden he's a good pitcher now. He has a career high in strikeouts yesterday. You saw the Patrick Sandoval video of him getting coached by Shohei in the dugout, and Shohei literally told him like five, spent like five minutes with him being like, yeah, just come set like this. Or I think he was talking about like not moving his head as much when he's quick pitching or something. All of a sudden, Patrick Sandoval has the, you know, first time hitting double-digit strikeouts since last season. I, anybody could coach better than Matt Wise at this point. I, I just don't see a justification to keep him around. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, go ahead, man. You go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go. You, go, you have a more important point, I promise. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think, like, ultimately, it's showing that like not only they, i just think we have the talent and that's apparent given the fact that as soon as they receive any semblance of advice or like change their approach to something instead of kind of just using the same approach um you know they they pitch really well so it's it's it burns more to me in a sense because you can see that like we could be really good if we just had the right sort of you know advice and coaching and like even what you said max yeah. like the point of uh, analytics in the front office, like all of that stuff extends to how these players are coached and how they're, you know, helped. And so I definitely think Matt Wise and Jeremy Reed are to blame here, but ultimately this is a broader question of like, how are we breaking down? Like, how are we helping our players, you know, progress? Because I think ultimately what I see is just stagnant. Like we're bad and we just remain that way because we're just doing the same thing. Um, and I, I really liked, I, I talked about this yesterday with Nolan, but I really liked what Mark Gubazov pointed out yesterday with Detmers and how, you know, he was sent down. He, uh, cha you could see the difference in arm angle with, with his slider, I think was the pitch and how much more effective it was. And like, that was, you know, two games down with uh, the trash pandas, right? So it's just, it, it, what could be and like how you can feel how that's potentially possible makes this a lot more frustrating. Cause it would be one thing if we just didn't have the talent but our starting pitching is, I, I think, could definitely be worked on for the better. So that's that's what I think makes it a lot more frustrating for me. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but yeah, no, I think you're, that, that's a lot of good points. And, and what I was gonna say is that it's a tough look for Matt Wise. Like, I I, don't know, I get really uncomfortable when people you know call for people's jobs and stuff. I don't know Matt Wise personally, like, and but it just shows that like it's a tough look when you know you're up there all year and then the guy goes, you know, Reed goes down for like two weeks or whatever. And it's like, okay, now, which is kind of like a good thing and a bad thing, but now we know we have, like, a Salt Lake pitching lab, like, where we can send guys down and get corrected and come back up. Obviously, we probably got to see more from Reed, but it's just, you know, it, it is a tough look when, um, you know, you're you're supposed to be coaching these guys up or whatever. But I think, back to my point, I'm not having enough uh, employees or whatever. Like, I really think that, I don't want to say they're overwhelmed. I just don't know if, like, they have – you know, you have like a lime, right? You got to squeeze every drop. I don't know if they're getting every ounce of information available. Um, like when we play the Astros, you could tell like when they start, you know, when four, five, and six start getting singles and you, you could tell like, oh, fuck, they're hitting. They know what's coming, whatever. A lot of the times, Angels, like offensively, I don't think, and that's kind of me switching gears, but like I don't think they really have every single piece of information on their opponent or on tendencies or whatever, like, I don't know. Sometimes at the plate, it just kind of looks like they're guessing, which, again, I'm not a major leaguer, so I don't really, you know, I'm, I'd be out there guessing too, but it's also, um, like, that's kind of, I feel like they just need more info. Um, and, and I think with that comes maybe more employees, more cost. I don't know how people really feel about that. 
Well, I'm actually a very tentative, like, take it with a grain of salt. Just the first thing I looked up um, that I could find analytics department wise. The teams with the biggest analytical departments are the Yankees, the Astros, the Rays, the Dodgers, the Braves, and the Brewers. All and then, playoff teams. Yeah. But I will say, outside of those top three teams in each league, you have the Angels are actually third in the American League um, by personnel size when it comes to the analytics department. And then the Reds are fourth in the National League. Oh, not so, a great stat for me. So. Yeah, it's kind of... I, I don't know. I mean, clearly the, the teams... I mean, still, the Rays almost doubled our... The Yankees do double our size in analytic department. Uh, and the Astros and Rays have a significant more as well. So it's like... I don't know. I, I get what you're saying. It feels... Well, I, I see Trout and Shohei in the in the dugout on the iPad all the time, analyzing their swing and whatnot. And that's that's what you have to do. Like, there's no point in being a boomer anymore and being, like, anti-analytics. Like, it is so clearly helpful. And these, these good franchises are at, like, the Rays, turning Isak Paredes, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, into, like, the best second baseman in baseball all of a sudden a dude who was labeled a bust with the tigers and all of a sudden he's hitting like 12 home runs every week with the rays or the entire Rays pitching staff is nobodies just absolute nobodies outside of like glass now who's on the il and like shane baz but like they just drew rasmussen is is a stud pitcher with the rays all of a sudden nobody knew who the hell this guy was coming into this season they just find these random dudes fix one thing we saw it with uh, hunter strickland last year phenomenal with the rays ass with the angels phenomenal with the brewers it's yeah, yeah. we're we're a cancer <laughs> to I pitchers just, it, the thing i guess the thing to kind of back up my point that got cracked earlier like mm-hmm. If the Yankees two hundred like why? And you're saying that you're you're exhausting every option to try to win. It's like why wouldn't at the very least you match you match that number? Or like I, I don't know. Like I don't think the you know you obviously can't like poach guys. And then like again, I don't put a ton of blame on the coaching staff because it's like I I you know Phil Nevin wasn't planning on being the manager in April. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I, I, I kind of do feel bad for, you know, when things are going rough and where everyone's down in the gutter, like everyone kind of had to rank up mid-season and it's like, I guess you kind of have to expect for that, but then like, I don't know, do you really go into a season being like, well, I'll be manager by July, like, you know, but at the same time, they're making millions and they have a job to do, so I don't really well, feel bad I, for I them, feel but, like the management uh, hasn't been the problem though. Like, you can't manage, like, you know, the saying you can't polish a turd. If the entire team is performing poorly, you can't out you can't manage around individual bad performances. Like Phil Nevin managed the game amazingly last night, or yeah, last night, and Rysel just didn't perform well that night. And there's nothing yeah. you could do about it. You couldn't have managed that differently. What are you gonna do? Not bring in your closer who was a lockdown guy for in the entirety of last year? Like Yeah, I, I hear you on that. I, yeah, I, I don't so- think it's been a manager problem. Reason. maybe so i was just gonna say like with max's points there like i think maybe it's not a question of i mean it is partially like again we could definitely beef up that sort of you know department de- departmental sort of like analytic structure whatever uh, you were saying but like it, i think it's also just it seems like there's you know what nolan said trout and otani in there they're using those ipads they're they're paying attention to that stuff and coincidentally you know, they're some of the better players on the team. And I think part of that's just talent. But at the same time, I think maybe it's just the lack of emphasis on that technology within the entire organization. Like if if the players, you know, really embrace that and there was like a culture of understanding that. And I think that also would help um, as well. But it but I think that that unfortunately does stem from the coaching staff because they're going to be the ones who are implementing that and kind of using that to make points and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's just, there's so many different like, you know, things happening at the same time that are just intersecting and it makes it so complicated, but there's a lot to be said for that as well. I think like if we utilize that and really dove into more analytics and, and and showing and, you know, making adjustments, that's something I don't see very much of. And when I do, there's some success there. And so I just wish that we, you know, with our hitting all these, all these different elements that are off right now, like just 
you know, making these, you know, minor adjustments can really make a huge difference. So again, just kind of goes back to that thing about like what could be, but yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah. Like, you know, you were just saying it's the lack of adjustments. Um, I I'm reading the chat while you're talking and everyone right now is talking about Brandon Marsh. He's a, he's a perfect example of this where it just, he's a great, I know he's a great hitter. I've seen it happen. Uh, he can hit for contact. He is not as big of a strikeout risk as he has been right now, but he just has a massive hole in his swing right now. And there's nothing going on to change it. It doesn't feel like, you know, it feels like, you know, he's not making any effort to change that. And I don't know if that, you know, falls more on the personal player or that falls more on the hitting coach. What, what do you guys think about Brandon Marsh? And I, I don't think he should be sent down, but a lot of people are calling him to get sent down. I think his defense is too valuable. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I saw the, I saw the same tweets of being like, you want Joe Adele down, but you don't want Brandon Marsh down. Um, yeah, I think the answer there is just defense. I don't, you know, it. I don't know. But yeah, his offense has been tough to watch. Uh, but defensively, I think he's a major league outfielder. Um, and until we have another guy in the minors or whatever, like, come up, like, it just kind of feels like it's, you know, Trout Ward, Marsh, until someone else steps up. Yeah, for for me, I think I, I definitely struggle with this question because, like, when I'm really frustrated with, you know, our squad, I am, I think what I want to see is, like, I, I would want Adele up and maybe send Marsh down only for the sake of, like, why not it's not so much in the sense of like i think adele will be like a huge success story and be a lot better but it's just more of when i'm super frustrated with the team and i'm like let's shake things up right but realistically i i do agree with what you guys are saying if adele was to the defensive caliber of marsh i think then we would be having a different discussion because if adele can hit better and he also has that defense then you know of course that should be he should be in his place but like you said adele definitely had some holes in his defense so it's hard to say because you know last thing i want to see is not only you know us not hitting but uh you know misplays in the outfield where people are getting inside the park home runs that would definitely be uh, a lot more salt in the wound that i just i don't think i could handle as an angels fan right now so um well, it's tough man i uh, part well part of my question was like do you think it's on Adele to fix it and make the adjustments or is this reflective of like the hitting coaching staff as a whole or just Jeremy Reed in, in particular like you know I know Max you know, saying we don't want to like call for people's jobs or anything but yeah. you know is this a reflective no, of the coaching staff or it's, it's a tougher question to answer like it's not just you know because if it was just Marsh or like Marsh or a couple other guys but it's like I don't know. We had 30 strikeouts in two games last week. It, it, it seems like something needs to get, you know, uh, something needs to shake up. Um, yeah, and like like Frank said, I don't even think Adele needs to be the same level as Marsh. I think if he's like 60% of his defense, like I think even then you you bring him up, which is also kind of weird is how you kind of been playing baseball forever and then you just get to the bigs and like your defense struggles. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's it's something again I'm, I'm just always going to go back to more information like if you know what pitch is coming or if you kind of have a 50 50 instead of a 10 you know 15 25 percent guess like i don't know i think that's better and i think they just need i don't think they're going up there with as much information as they should be because uh, i don't know i'm hearing gooby call like oh he's gonna throw a slider here and then the guy throws a slider and big whiff and it's like how did gooby know that but like the batter didn't see that come in or like you know like just things like that yeah. but again i always hold myself to like I, I always just whenever i say something i try to think of the troll's response and be like well you would whiff and be like yeah you're right like i would so that's why i kind of yeah you know, that's my thing like, yeah, yeah. I, I get you I, I would as well but um it, some that's frustrating when you can hear gooby saying hey you probably look out for you know low inside whatever that's exactly what comes in the end of the inning you're watching a fucking Applebee's commercial. Yeah, yeah exactly. Is, and I think I was just going to say to that point, like, I think as frustrating as it is, it is kind of both, right? Like, it's it's both the because, you know, that's that's a kind of a roundabout answer. But I really do think it's it's both like to the sense of the coaching staff. Definitely. It seems like there's some holes there. Like, we can't go around that. But at the same time, you know, these guys, I, 
I guess my question really is, is like when these guys, I you know, they're obviously trying to do their best. They're they're definitely frustrated. Uh, I don't know who wouldn't be if they were performing the way that this team is, and you know, on an individual level, how they're performing. But I guess my question is like, do you think that these guys, you know, strike out, you know, continue to strike out, sit down, and they just, where do they go with that frustration? Like, I feel like it, it is both the coaching staff and kind of some individual. Uh, responsibility there to be you know asking questions right like pushing for the sense of like what am i doing wrong and that kind of just loops back to the analytic thing because like you said like with trout and otani you can you can see them in the dugout seeing like you know even when they're playing well otani's looking for micro adjustments and like what am i doing that i could definitely like tweak a little bit to be better and I just don't really like see that from these other guys who are performing, kind of underperforming. So I think it's a little bit of individual responsibility on top of the fact that maybe the structure in which they are like receiving advice from doesn't seem to be as adequate as it should be. So it's just a huge mess, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, one of my biggest problems with them offensively right now is the fact that they're getting blown away by like 92 mile per hour fastballs. It, it feels like nobody can get around to a pitch right now every like even even mike trout right now mike trout is is striking out at an unbelievable rate he's always had strikeout problems and it's never been that big of an issue especially when he was just coming into the league i think he was striking out around 30 percent of the time which you can strike out 30 percent of the time and still be a good hitter but every time i see him hit a home run i feel like it's on a low or hanging curveball slider change up it's never on the fastball it feels like none of these guys can get around to a fastball right now and I, it, you know, as a fan, it's you, you see these things all the time. And I know it's not easy to hit a hundred mile per hour fastball, but when you're getting blown away by 92 miles per hour, isn't the, the like general rule of thumb in baseball, sit fastball and adjust. It feels like they're all sitting, waiting for a hanging curve ball. And every once in a while they get it and they score 10 runs. But if they don't get that, then they're just SOL. I, I don't know. That's one of the adjustments I'd like yeah. to see them make. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, uh, with all the strikeouts, like, it's tough not, like, I I mean, for me, honestly, when we were up to, like, double-digit strikeouts, I'm just kind of like, yeah, no one's hitting. You're not hitting a beach ball out there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's one of those things that's, like, baffling. Like, I don't I don't know because, it, 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 again, it it's always relays back to information because they are they do batting practice every day, and they know what pitch is coming when they're doing batting practice, and they're sending those to fucking Honda Center. Um so yeah, I, I don't know, but it, it, the obviously it fits today because uh, you know we have guys on third with like one out or no outs, like and like I, that the whole week it's kind of felt like there's a guy on third and then I check my phone a minute later, still zero zero. Like what? Like I have no faith in basically like I don't know except Trout, Otani, maybe like Ward sometimes. Everyone else is just kind of up there. Like I, I don't know. I maybe bet the under on every game until they prove oh, us wrong. Dude. I with so I, we're sponsored by Thrive Fantasy. Shameless plug. Sign up at the link in the description or whatever. Uh, it is a literal free line every single day to take the opposing pitchers over in strikeouts. No matter what, oh, it's, yeah. at, it's it's free every single time. Like today, Dean Kramer was at four and a half. He had four and a half after three innings. He had he had five after three innings. Oh, it's God. so easy. It, it is free money. It it's. Yeah, it's it's a lot. The Alcantara one, the Alcantara one was just disrespectful to him. Uh, it was seven and a half. Which I, I can't believe he only had he had like ten or eleven, right? I was expecting like yeah. a twenty strikeout perfect game. <laughs> yeah, ten. <laughs> the way he's ten pushing. was. I, I was a little underwhelmed with ten, but I mean, you just kind of know, like with these dogs, like with these top line aces, like you're getting eight nine at least. Like, so yeah, four and a half is like. Well, yeah, luckily they brought in their terrible bullpen and we scored a run, but like it, it, yeah, I was at that game and I was, I, you can see it in my vlog. I'm like, we're getting perfect game today. We're not making contact with the baseball today. And I was pleasantly surprised. We actually got some hits, but it's, um, today we were what, let's see. Oh, for eight with runners in scoring position today. Oh, for eight. Yeah. It's just, well. it's just not going to get it done. I don't know. I um, I don't know. I have a lot of frustrations with this team. I did want to bring up uh, Trout is slumping a lot more than he ever has. It feels like, you know, he had the 0 for 26 uh, cold streak. 
I know his numbers are still amazing because he's still Mike Trout, but, like, is Mike Trout regressing, do you think? Is he still on an upward trajectory? Is it the coaching staff, again, that's messing him up? Or it feels like he's somewhat having a down year after a really hot start. What do you guys think? I don't want to say it out loud, but it, it, I, I did want to bring it up because... <laughs> I mean, it, it hurts to to think about even that that could be like happening yeah. actively. But I, well, I mean, aggression is still like really a top does. five player in baseball. It really does hurt to think about. Like I, I had this conversation with you know, it's a joke on our podcast where we have this like unnamed high baseball exec, and it's my cousin who's a junior in high school who just watches baseball all day, mm-hmm. and it, we were just talking shit, and he hit me with a line. I think maybe like a year or two ago where he's like, if you think about it, we only have like four years of Trout Prime left. And like, I don't know, I wanted to fight him kind of, but I was just like, that question you just said made me think of that. And it's like, I don't, yeah, I, I don't like thinking about these things because it's, there, there's going to come a time where he's, you know, not going to be him anymore. Um, right now, I think the case, I think you can, everyone can clearly see he's still, you know, like you said, top five player. I think he's just trying to drag this team. And that's like, I don't know, maybe that's affecting him in some way, but I can just tell that he has uh, whatever that meme is of the guy with, like, the world on his shoulders, like, that's him right now. And I'm attributing every 0 for 26, strike out four, four times in one game, all that to just the pressure and, like, the, like, obligation he has to, like, carry this team to the playoffs. And obviously it's, you know, not looking great right now, but um, I'm chalking it all up to that, to being, like, I still think he's a great player. I hate to yeah. put him on a random expansion team with whatever, you know, see see how that goes. But, I, like, I'm going to bet that he's, you know, put him on a good team. I think he's going to be number one for sure. But I think the pressure and everything and, I don't know, being a dad now, I, I just kind of think all that kind of just messes with him. Or, like, I don't know. like Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I also feel I, like, uh-huh. Go ahead, Frank. I was just going to say, someone in the chat said, and I think this is kind of what I'm going to launch from, but they said Mike Trout is suffering from his environment and kind of similar to what uh, Max was saying. Like, I don't know. I I think it could be like a slump. It could be, you know, again, he really does. Like he has some, He has, I, I think realistically he's he still has some prime years left. And like, I don't want to call that, you know, downward slope yet. Um you know let's hope that i'm right there but i think i think yeah like ultimately i i hope this isn't the case but i can't help but wonder if like maybe he does feel that responsibility to like carry this team and then when you know realistically this entire like because this sport is entirely like team oriented like multiple things have to go right even and here's another thing even when things go completely right teams still fall in the playoffs so like everything literally just has to align yeah everything has to align perfectly and i just hope that he doesn't bear that weight of year after year you know feeling the expectation to carry this team and then when it doesn't happen reasonably so because one individual that's amazing cannot carry a team like this uh, I hope he doesn't take that as like, you know, he's carrying that weight and that that will drag someone down. I think mentally, like the mental game is just as important as the physical. Uh, so, yeah, I, I hope that's not the case. But, you know, hopefully this is just like a slump and he's just cold right now. But um, that's kind of what I think. That's what I'm airing towards. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I forgot. All, I don't know. I forgot. What I was gonna say. You're good. I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I, you know, he could break out at any time and just go on a ridiculous tear where he's hitting like two home runs a game like he did early in the year. But, you know, it's, I mean, uh, yeah, pre, pre brawl, he was, you know, he had four game winning home runs in like a weekend. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it could, it's literally the, the, the switch could just be flipped on at any second. I also wonder, like, if he, kind of hears the clock or has a mental clock of like i mean i'm sure he's got to be aware of like the otani situation um you know i think he's there till like 2030 or whatever 2029 like he's got to like that's got to be on his mind right of being like hey we might lose this guy and then you know really from there like what you know i I, I think the pressure like i don't know if it gets higher or lower at that point like i'm not sure but 
I don't, I don't think it's healthy to be holding that pressure. Basically, what Frank said. Yeah, I I don't think it is either. But I don't know. Like, do do you think he's just? Because I don't, I, you know, there's a chance that we trade Otani. It's a real chance. I, w- I want to talk about it here in a second. But, you know, it feels like Trout's not really going anywhere. You know, his roots are down here. It doesn't seem like he wants to leave as much as you can clearly see he's frustrated that this team can't win a baseball game to save their lives. Um, but I, I, I feel like the organizations, like, disrespected him a little bit. I feel like when he signed that contract extension, they expected... You know, he expected this team to go out and compete within the next five to ten years. And, you know, even me, I was an optimistic, I was a very optimistic Angels fan before this season. Little uh, Pete Soto action. Just super optimistic all the time. And this was the season where I was like, everything was going to cultivate into this season. Pujols' money came off the books. We were still paying Upton, but, you know, that's like, what, $30, $40 million that we didn't have before. We were going to go over the salary cap or uh, luxury tax this year, go all out, sign a bunch of pitching free agents, maybe get a couple of bats, like a Trevor Story or a Corey Seager or something like that. And I was just really underwhelmed with the offseason, but the season started off so well, I was like, okay, maybe Perry was cooking something, you know, that that whole Thanos, what was he cooking meme. Um, And it looked good to start the year. I was like, okay, maybe, you know what? I I think I tweeted this out. I think I said, like, I will never, like, question Perry again. He was right. We didn't need all these crazy free agents because this is when, like, Marcus Semyon was struggling, Trevor Story was struggling, all these guys that we wanted, Robbie Ray, all these guys we wanted this offseason. But this was the year where I was like, we're out of excuses. There's no Pujols contract to use as an excuse. There's no, you know, Josh Hamilton contract to use it as an excuse. There's no, you know, what's it called? Um, the chains were released this off season, and we just didn't do anything with it. It felt like. So I forgot where I was going with this, but. No, I, I, I'll say I think, uh, I think it, it's one of those situations. Yeah, like you, you were saying, like Trout. I feel like they're kind of disrespecting him, yeah, you know, by signing him and not. And uh, I was going to say, I think like, you know, that quote that's like, you know, yeah, it, it we failed. We didn't make the, the playoffs, but not for a lack of trying. Right. But in this case, it's like, yeah, we didn't make the playoffs, but also for a lack of trying. Like, I just I just think like Trout, maybe at least I think he, he would understand. Right. Like if the team was making efforts to like inc- better our farm system you know, make front office moves that are better for the team and like the organization. I think that would bode well with him, even if things didn't work out, right? Like even if we didn't make the playoffs, but it just seems like we are content with, and this is ownership problems. This is, you know, front office issues in general, but like, it just seems like we're okay with the mediocre, the mediocrity. You know what I mean? Like it, and so I think that probably is more insulting to him that they're just like, actively choosing not seemingly at least like i don't know what's going on behind the scenes but seemingly from a surface level is like what we can see they're actively you know choosing not to do things and so that's what i think is disrespectful it's not even the fact that it's just that we're not trying it seems yeah yeah that debate that debate kind of leads into the like ownership like where they're essentially making you know millions off of his name filling up a stadium um, and then in turn, not using that revenue or using that, you, you know, to, cause I mean, I don't know, like, do you make in the mind, if I'm an owner and I'm, my goal is just to make money, it, do you get more for making the playoffs? Like how much more, how much more do I have to spend to potentially make more? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I don't like talking about that either. Cause it's just a lot of people, a, a lot of like fire already and all this stuff or make already so. Um, which I do think, like, yeah, it is kind of disrespectful um, that, you know, like, his name belongs up there with, like, Gretzky, LeBron, Michael Jordan, all, like, all those guys. But it's just he's going to get, you know, he probably won't get that tier of treatment um, because of, you know, obviously not reaching the playoffs. And, and baseball is a different sport, but I feel like, you know, you never hear people, like, say that about Griffey not having a ring. Like, or, you know what I mean? Like, I saw that on Twitter the other day. Um, I had a question for you guys. Like, what, you know, his tenure here is, like, successful no matter what. He's a Hall of Famer. Like, he's probably not going to be unanimous because, you know, if things go the way they're going, like, they're probably not going to make him unanimous. Um, what 
do you think like kind of salvages this the last like 10 years really like is it and i asked it on my podcast like i said hey do you think like you know one playoff series isn't going to cut it obviously everyone's going to say oh a ring back to anaheim but you know let's say like they make the playoffs a couple times over the next year like what you know if you get bounced in the first round every time like that kind of feels like nothing um but like what do you guys think is like a what would a world series would wash all these criticism away but like what would kind of salvage like i said three playoff series wins like if you get them three years in a row or you get them all in one year like that's what I think. I, I just wanted to hear your guys' take on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the ring's the easy cop out answer, but um, I think you know, at least for me, one ALCS berth, or you know, just a deep enough, deep enough playoff run to get him some stats under his belt. You know, I think the stat line currently is one one for twelve with a home run in his postseason career that's just not good enough you know if if we could go on a deep enough run maybe play like 10 postseason games even if we don't win the world series or even make the world series get him to the point where he's had like you know 50 plus postseason at bats he's had a cup of coffee in there you know you have some sort of thing to build on you have an example of him on the biggest stage because he's never played he hasn't played a meaningful game since he was what 23 years old 22 years old like all these stats yeah. are really cool and all, but, you know, as much as I, you know, as Angels fans, we know how to defend an MVP race because, you know, playoff success doesn't mean shit when it comes to the MVP. But I I, I do agree in, his, in his, the grand scheme of things in his career, it's going to look really fucking bad if he goes into Cooperstown one for 12 in his only postseason appearance when he was 22 years old. Like, yeah. I know WRC yeah. Plus probably is like 500 because of that, but... Yeah, I, I think ultimately this is like, I, I would agree. I think you know you gotta have some games under your belt. Uh, you know, maybe two or three appearances or you know playoff series wins. That's kind of where I'm sitting. Or I mean, obviously like a World Series ring, but that's again a cop out answer. So like, let's just assume that's yeah. not gonna happen. Let's. Uh, but I, but I think it's all relative, right? Because like anyone that knows baseball, I think would understand that like, where we are now. If we were to get to that point, you know, where we have a few playoff series wins as a franchise, I think that's impressive for the Angels, right? Like as a franchise. So that it's all relative compared to where you are. Like if the Yankees, for instance, if Judge, let's say, you know, plays the rest of his, let's say he stays there, right? And he, there's multiple series and, you know, with how good they are right now and you know their their futures you know all these young teams i mean even go to like someone like the pirates we talked about the pirates and the orioles and how they have young squads who look really promising so down the line if that kind of you know flops and they only have a couple it's like for the angels it's a big feat to get that those playoff wins but for a different team it could be not as impressive it's all relative compared to like where the starting point is so I think for our franchise and like how we are, our trajectory is just so negative and bad. It would be, it would be great comparatively, right? If that makes sense. Oh yeah. Well, you see all these memes about like you know the Timberwolves in the NBA postseason this year going absolutely fucking nuts for a. Uh, I don't even know what they won. Was it like a play-in? Playing game. Yeah, yeah playing game. game. That's you know, and all the memes about San Diego, what they did in their wild card win in 2020 or whatever. That's you know, I, I feel like that's very similarly how we would react if we even you know the new playoff format. If we won a wild card and made it to the DS, like the division series would be just like you know. I don't, I don't even know what to call it. I don't have that words to describe how happy that would make me, but like, this is all just the, the conversations just tough to have because there's just no hope for this franchise to make a postseason. It, it, honestly, anywhere in the near future, either we have no direction yeah. in this franchise. We have, I think uh, the 29th ranked farm system in all of baseball. We're the only team that has no top 100 prospects currently we have some good names, but we don't have any, you know, we're, we're not going to be a deep ball club, a deep enough ball club to make a postseason run anytime soon. We would have to get extremely lucky uh, and maybe just hire a really good coaching staff like the Giants did last year and somehow won 107 games with a roster full of, you know, 
relatively unknown random guys with a couple of stars that were in their 40s or whatever um i i just don't see us i don't know i yeah, honestly you... don't see trout ever getting to the playoffs with this franchise for the rest of his career yeah i haven't i've had a nightmare it's kind of like a recurring one that the you know he's gonna like i say he's gonna be great he's gonna go to hall of fame whatever uh like let's say you know worst case scenario he just plays his contract out and the team is just not good, right? You know, third place finish, fourth place finish, whatever. He retires. Like, that immediate year following, like, we make the playoff. Like, that's my recurring nightmare. Is that, like, the second he's gone, like, then we make it? Like, that would just be so cruel. And I, I almost feel like it's just so cruel that it just had, like, again, 25% to God. Like, that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, it's it's it feels just disrespectful to not do everything in your power to get him to the postseason, and it feels like yeah. that's what we've been doing since he signed his big contract. We have never gone all in. We've we've dipped our toes in the water, you know. We've gone out and made some moves, but we've never gone all in like like the Dodgers, you know, or the Yankees. We've never gone crazy in free agency. We've never made blockbuster trades. Like I don't know how Trout was fooled into thinking that we were going to do this. But clearly somebody talked him into it and made him think that. But we I mean, even, like, I guess on a positive note, like, you know, I, I don't know how Hall of Fame contention or, you know, that debate will go if things kind of stay in this trajectory. I still think, you know, if he has these continually good seasons where he's, like, you know, one of the best players in baseball, I don't see how he wouldn't, you know, maybe not unanimously, like you said, but... Yeah. But I think uh, the positive note, like I did see, I don't know anything about basketball, so you guys can maybe help me here. But uh, Damian Lillard, someone compared Trout to him and they said this is not in a bad way. But in the sense that like Lillard has, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he's like, has he won a championship? No. No. Yeah, no. so, but I mean, but pe people, once. people know. I think they've been, I think they've been to the playoffs. I don't know if he's won a championship. They might have yeah. They've at least, I, I don't know, maybe they've gotten there and I'm not sure. But, you know, people know his talent. And I think that's what I hold out hope for is that people will be able to, like, let, you know, separate the fact that, like, someone like Damian Lillard in the NBA is an incredible talent. And, like, just because of, like, where he ended up, that, I don't know. I, I just, I hope that that's the case. But it is scary because, like you said, I mean, that could affect, you know, the unanimous vote that I think he definitely deserves if he stays on this trajectory. He is, uh, you know, one of the best of our generation, if not the best. So it'd be really tough to see. And I agree with what you're saying. And I think even just from like the nightmarish aspect of it, like it seems like where our farm system is right now. I mean, what he's got like seven years left in his contract. So let's say that's that's what he eats up. That's uh, I, I feel like that's what it's going to take unless we make some drastic change for us to organically become a team that can make the playoffs. That seems like the timeline we're operating under. So it might be some sort of like sick nightmare, but I also think that's definitely possible, right? Because we we are just so far away, it seems, from having like organic growth and like prospects in line that will make our team better. Uh, so that seems like the timeline we're operating under is like seven years, right? And that's, that's uh, I don't know, man. Well, you know, if you guys I mean, have anything to add. You, you gotta look at it like how excited everyone was for award like breakout, which, I guess you could still kind of call it that. He's kind of got, you know, we knew that wasn't sustainable. But, like, it's just, you, you look at teams like the Dodgers and stuff, and it's, like, literally every year they have a guy who just comes up and is ready. Even, like, Gavin Lux, there was, like, their top prospect for a little bit, and then he comes up and he's looking to be, like, average. You know, he's pretty average, right? But that's, like, kind of what you need. And it's, like, the Angels just don't have that where, like, Joe Dell's coming up. He's supposed to be, like, I don't know, I, I think they might have even put him in, like, superstar category. And, you know, he might be that later on down the road, but it's just when we, the Angels don't have that, like, young guy coming in, you know, every two to three years of just, like, kind of being, they have Mike Trout, don't get me wrong, I, I would take Mike Trout over four or five, you know, middle names, whatever, but, yeah, I don't know, it's just something that no other franchise really has to deal with, I guess, aside from, like, the Oilers, if you guys like hockey, but it's like having the two best players on a team on a team in a league that's a team sport is just like who can give us that playbook like you know like the 1940 yankees or whatever like who's who's gonna give us like hey here's what you do uh 
uh, when you are top heavy. Like it's just you know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we just need to. I I feel like because you're too deep, you can't rebuild right now. If you rebuild, you have to trade Trout. Because you can't trade yeah. Otani and not trade Trout. You you can't lock. You can't have Trout be around for a rebuild. He, you well, have I, to I, I at least. Saying, like, I, think, uh -huh. I think if you don't if you don't know Otani's gonna resign, like I think that's priority number one is you have to figure that out. Like I, I don't know, take his take his agent out to go play golf, do something. Like you have to figure out if he's gonna resign. If he's gonna resign, then I think you got more homework to do. Like, but the fact that nobody knows if he's gonna resign right now, which I guess. For any player that has a contract coming up in a year, or 18 months, whatever, like, I don't think it's common to make it public that he's going to stay or leave. Like, but that should be priority number one for whoever's, like, we yeah. need to figure out what the deal is here and then we can move our chess pieces. Because it will suck if he leaves and we get nothing. Yeah, and you can't do that. Like, that's what the Rockies did with Trevor Story last year. And that's just... Exactly. Like, that that would make me unbelievably pissed off. Like, that would make me want to stop following this team. That's just an unbelievable amount of incompetence. And that that's is something I can... Like, what would, uh -huh. That's a good question. Like, what would make you stop following legitimately? I mean, Shohei walking yeah. with getting... I mean, we'd give him the qualifying offer, so we'd still get, like, a second-round draft pick, but... Shohei walking with no haul. I don't think I'd stop following the team, but I, I definitely would not be following them as close as I am now. I, I probably gotcha. would not. You know, I'm never going to stop being an Angels fan. I mean, well, if you're asking what would make me stop being an Angels fan, it would be so, it had to be something awful. Like, you know, if the Angels had the cheating scandal with the Astros, I wouldn't have stopped following the team. But if they did something outright, just like morally just r ridiculously fucked up like and that's like penn state or whatever right like that that's what, yeah it would like it I, would... I, think, I think that's like on the table i think everyone would kind of be like yeah you guys suck for that um yeah i mean i, I guess mine would just be like something disrespectful trout wise i've kind of come to terms that like otani might not stay for mm -hmm. ever or like he might not be angel for life because he he's kind of seen the blueprint he's kind of seen trout do it and i don't really know his thoughts and he's it's not weird for me to say he's probably thinking about it and being like yeah i'm not doing that like fuck that um so yeah i think something disrespectful to trout leaving or in a, in a disrespectful way obviously um getting traded to a team where he you know like i don't know baltimore or something like that i don't know it, that oh he'd be it great with a team probably. like with a young, young core like baltimore or you know the pirates when they're good in a couple of years but well, that's my big problem with this franchise you saw that um the mariners podcast that tweeted and everybody on angels twitter was roasting him um about like the angels are the next team to have a 20-year playoff drought and i i quoted his tweet and i said he's not wrong like if you had to pick from the list of teams that are in a playoff drought us and the tigers would be the two but the tigers have a lot of good young prospects the pirates have a lot of good young prospects they've been in a rebuild for a while the phillies look like they're going to make the playoffs this year uh the mariners look like they're i, th I think the mariners are going to make the playoffs this year i know they had a rough start to the year but they're going to have a great second half julio rodriguez is by the end of this season will be a top 10 player in baseball i don't think that's a hot take he has a ridiculous amount of talent and they've built they all these teams that have sucked for so long they have all gone through a lengthy rebuild and now they're trending upward except for the angels they we're we're in purgatory we're not going anywhere we're still going to have the big names we're still going to have sellout crowds to see otani play for at least this next year but we have no clear direction with this franchise right now and i just it is ridiculously frustrating because i can deal with bad if we're working towards something I can't deal with bad yeah. with no, you know, there's no light at the end of the tunnel right now. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. I, I and then to uh, answer Max's question, um, I think uh, for me, well, first of all, I want to say like, yeah, it's it's pretty obvious that Otani is looking at Trout and saying, you know, I, I think, it, well, this is what I at least would assume is happening. That he's looking at Trout and saying like, I don't want to make that same mistake. Um, to me, it's just a shame that Trout didn't have someone to look at, right? So, like, Trout just had to figure this out on his own, and now he's potentially getting screwed over. And I think, like, what Nolan said is, like, it's different, and I've already said this before, but, like, just to reiterate, it's different if, like, we are making upward trajectory, 
Trow can see that, but I think Trow can see that we're we're actively like choosing not to at least seemingly better the franchise. So that's what's frustrating. Uh, it, I I think at the end of the day, I'll always be an Angels fan. It, it'd be really like I've tried. I've actually had moments where I've like been. Like, I'm going to follow a different team, and then I just end up gravitating back. So it's it, it would have to be something, like, utterly astounding. Like, I think a major, uh, you know, scandal or some sort of, uh, like, I don't know, Trout. Uh, letting Otani walk would be a big one as well. But I think, or, you know, trading or, you know, screwing Trout over, something like that. Because at the end of the day, like, a lot of the reason I follow this team is because of like proximity and like how i grew up and everything but the reason that i like really fell in love with the team over the years has been like watching mike trout play baseball so if they did something absolutely like astounding to him then i think i would probably not really sit well with me and how i view the franchise um but yeah i i, I would agree i don't think otani is uh we can maybe talk about that i don't think otani is uh I don't think he'll be an angel in the next couple of years, and I can't blame him. Nor do I think, uh, honestly, I think it would be it would be beneficial for us to trade him. And uh, and of course, that begs the question of like, what are we gonna do with Trout? Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just I, I I've been in the the mindset this year that I think it's just like it's ultimately time to just reconcile with the fact that we need to rebuild and like build a foundation from which we can build on because right now like. Again, we're so top heavy, but like, what does that matter if the house is going to collapse? You know what I mean? Like, we we have to be able to make a structure that's worth and you know sustainable, uh, a strong foundation, and that's what these teams are doing. You know, you you, you know, we we associate the Pirates, you know, as a thirty-five and fifty team. I mean, the Angels aren't far off from that. So, but uh, regardless, you know, we we think of the Pirates, we think bad, but they're 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 uh they they seem like a, a solid young core that i i'm excited to watch in the next few years and i i can't say the same about the angels so one they have no payroll so they can go out and get whoever they need to supplement their team that's true or tied yeah. up with rendon and right this year upton last year pool holes we just love paying yeah well it already has a it's so clear to see Artie's system you know sign a big name free agent when one falls off the books, just sign another. When one falls, it's a repetitive cycle of big names he can put on the back of jerseys to sell. And he just hit the fucking lottery when Otani decided to sign here. Like, I I, I, I don't know if you guys believe in karma, but it's hard to believe in karma after Otani decided to sign with the Angels. Like, the Angels are the worst. They treat their minor leaguers like shit. And they make a ridiculous amount of money. It's probably the most you know besides the yankees i guess in the dodgers it's probably like top five most profitable teams in baseball and you know all the international tv deals all the international media and everything that comes with otani it doesn't matter how much you pay otani he's gonna be profitable and this franchise has done almost everything it can to make me want to stop being a fan and i'm still here so if, if you're an angels fan right now you're you're, you're here for life like because even if they did even if we, they did some of the bad shit we're talking about you know something like morally um what's the word i was looking for More, morally wrong yeah reprehensible that's the word yeah. um even if they did something like that they would be forced to sell and to be a new ownership group and i'd probably still go back to the team because it's a new ownership group and it's not associated with the former one so there was there was one like i don't know like conspiracy minded but like not like really kind of like a joke but there was you know already already likes money i don't think that's a hot take um and obviously the stadium deal one of the most like underrated aspects i think to this season uh literally looks like it hit a switch you know that's when the 14 gamer started whatever Let me show you i had hope for you know that land deal being done whatever and, and i made jokes of putting a yard house in the parking lot or they were going to develop all that land and build it up and already was going to have an atm like right like he was just going to be making money and then i figured like all right well what good is that like do, does anyone want to go to a you know don't get me wrong being in socal helps but I had hoped that when that was established and they built the hotels and the restaurants and everything, then I was like, all right, then he has to start caring about this team because you don't see a lot of 
you know, te- stadiums and the nightlife and all that stuff that are like bad. Like, don't remember the Pirates have a great park, whatever. But the Padres was like the biggest one forever, where they're like they're in the middle of everything. And if they suck, like that sucks. But when they're good, like it's popping. So I had hope that when that was built, that he would. I don't want to say he doesn't care about the team, but maybe up that percentage of caring a little more, maybe of winning or whatever. And then when they kind of like nix that deal, like it is just kind of like I that I had hope for that. And then now it's just kind of gone. And it seems like ever since that was that news was broken, the team, I don't know. And, and it, I don't like curses. I don't like jinxes. But that I don't know how else to explain the correlation of when that shit happened and how the team was going. So, yeah, just a little do conspiracy. You, do you guys think a new ownership group would impact the team like a significant amount or is it just something that we like to talk about because Artie Marino is very easy to not like it would have to be like a Steve Cohen but I mean we don't have the Angels don't have fans like that like they don't have a fan that's 70 years old like that's a billionaire like that 70 year old billionaire is probably a Dodger fan and that's just it just I don't know I can't imagine yeah. there's a fun, but it would, it would have to be like a uh, Balmer from the Clippers Cohen. Other than other than that, and a random billionaire, like I don't know, like maybe you can't read. You got to guess. But if it's a super fan like that, I'm gonna say yeah. Just look at the Mets. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's necessarily a, a super fan out there that you know. Maybe there is. Who knows? But I, I think it would be more of a, for me. Ownership change could be good, just in the sense that it seems like Artie is averse to you know making any changes other than just slap and i've used this phrase before but like slapping band-aids on stab wounds you know what i mean like we're we're actively bleeding out and he's just like throwing band-aids on it and just like oh here's a big guy oh here's a big guy that's gonna cripple our our finances right like it it just seems like any any owner that would you know push the franchise and the general management the front office to to organically build up a strong foundation as opposed to just like these quick fixes so to speak i think would be a vast improvement so it doesn't even really have to be uh a steve cohen type for me at least Uh, that's what i think i think uh ultimately like but it would be good to have a change of ownership i think uh from a, a broad sense but um or or either that or already you know if he came to his senses i'd be fine with uh already owning the team but uh I, j- I just don't see that happening so uh i think we know Artie's. you know at least i'm not gonna say we i'll speak for myself here i think personally Artie's intentions are to make money and he is doing so right like with otani uh you know with the, that like you said he struck gold there so that's that's what i think he's happy with that uh and i think any person that actually has the the best interest of the trajectory and future of the franchise is not Ari Moreno to be just blunt so and that point kind of makes me that point makes me think that like there's no way he doesn't resign here Otani Uh, because of that reason of like if it you know it's kind of like he's gonna resign him to make money but everyone's gonna be like oh he's resigning to just trying to win he kind of gets like brownie points for both I guess but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys wanted to get into that. It kind of felt like we are going that way. But, like, what does a, a payroll look like with Otani, Trout, Rendon? Like, that, again, you have that argument of being, like, you can't pay three guys 100 mil or whatever. Like, I agree. I think that's tough. But it's yeah. also, what do you do with the unicorn on the, that's – you need a decision pretty soon. So, let's say he does want to stay. What do we do? Oh, it's it's a terrifying idea. And it is, you're locking yourself into mediocrity for the next seven to ten years, if if you sign him, in my opinion. Isn't that fucked up though? Like, cause it fuck, is. Like you, like you like have to resign. Him. Uh, yeah. In, like the, you'll be a, you'll be a mock. The Angels will be mocked times ten x if Otani goes somewhere else and like wins immediately. Don't get me wrong, but. Like if they re-sign him and stay mediocre, like they're getting mocked. Up. Like they're getting mocked either way. I think. It, like there's no. I, I don't know if I'd rather. I, I'd rather just you know get it over with and get the mockery over with, right? Like that's that's what I think. I I, I honestly at this point am kind of hoping for that because it will alleviate funds for us to actually rebuild. 
um you know alleviate some payroll there like to not have otani but yeah that is that is kind of like as exciting as it would be in a weird way to have otani stay for like a personal enjoyment standpoint to have otani on the angels it's also equally kind of fucked up because what does that say about like how can we rebuild when we're you know surrounding ourselves with those contracts and i think that that's just like kind of you know that's just something that oh man it's tough because that's something that's like i guess had to have been thought about previously and now if we're in that position then there's really nothing we can do uh I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say there's nothing we could do. It would, it would be. I think we could work around it. But yeah, like we are subjecting ourselves to mockery, and I think from my perspective, I would rather just get it over with. Where Otani goes to a team, care, you know, the team makes it pretty far, or if not, you know, wins a uh, a World Series, and then everyone's like, haha. But it, it yeah. but that that compared to like years and years of mockery, I think is uh, looks like sunshine to me, you know. Well, it'll be huh. one thing if we had three players making a hundred million dollars with good prospects coming up, a good future to build around, you know, good young guys who aren't making too much money yet. But that is so not even close to the case. Like, I if if you sign Otani, you have to commit to being over the luxury tax, probably until Rendon's contract runs out. I think Rendon and Trout both run out in like 2027, something like that. Um, you, no, you just... that that's what I was thinking too. Um, because if you look, I mean, I don't know how rational Otani is. Like, I know he's loved by everyone, but I don't really know how. When it comes to someone's money, I don't know how someone's gonna act, and I don't know him. I don't even know Japanese culture, so I don't. I don't know. But you'd have to think that he'd be a little bit more flexible if he wanted to stay, and his intentions were to win then it's going to be kind of like, hey, dude, you're, you know, the, the, it's kind of tight. Like, we, we can pay you X amount until we get this third baseman off our books. And then, you know, don't get me wrong, you're going to get all your money. It's just going to be, like, in the back half, um, which I, I brought up on our podcast. But it's like people – or uh, Pete was like, no shot. He's not going to take, a like, less salary for the first three or four years or whatever. But I think you kind of have to if you – if Otani says he wants to win – I don't think you could say you want to win and take 45 mil. Like, don't get me wrong. He deserves every penny, but I just don't see how. Oh, he's going to get 50. The, yeah. So I, 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 I just don't know how that happens. Yeah. yeah I, 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 you can't have it both ways. You have to, you can win or you can sign Shohei Otani. That's, that's what it feels like to me. It feels like a fucked up ultimatum, you know? Yeah. Just... And I'd prefer him to stay like for, you know, for the record, he's exciting. He's great for baseball. Um, oh, he's my favorite the player like, in the I game. I don't know how he could not be anybody's favorite player in the game. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah it's but so uh, fucking fun to watch. Go ahead. I, I think like prox- but... Yeah, it, it would be it would be awkward. It would kind of suck as an Angels fan to see him in a different jersey. But if that's what like I think I just have a little bit of I, as much as I want him to stay, and it would be awkward to see him in a different jersey and like kind of painful at first. Like this guy, I just. I don't want the same thing to happen like that happened with trout and uh the that that to me is more terror that that terrifying prospect is more upsetting to me than any moment in which like i see him go to a different team like it, it would be upsetting but i would rather like for his sake and his success if he truly wants to win and that's what it takes i mean who knows like if he takes that ultimatum, we can alleviate some funds. We actually build up a team that can actually win, then great. But I, I, I have a hard time believing that's the case. I think it's more likely that if he truly wants to win and be on a team that has that caliber uh, and that potential, it's on a different squad. And so I, 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 I guess like this is corny, but like I want what's best for Otani and like his success. And uh, it would suck to see him play somewhere else, but I guess maybe that's where I just like differ a little bit is like, I'm not so optimistic that that is with the angels. And uh, I just don't know if his best interests are in Anaheim, man. So, uh, but listen guys, I, I've had a great time talking with you. I actually have to dip out, but uh, I uh, appreciate, you know, being able to vent with you guys. It's been really real. I, I, I've had, had a this i've been on a few vent lines this was definitely one of my favorites and in, in terms of like information and insight so thank you guys so much i'm gonna head out but uh 
Y'all yeah, have a good bro. night, all right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. See you later. Nice to meet. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Too, bro. Yeah. What's his Twitter? So, I need to follow that guy. That guy's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, I think it's Bro Tawny Son. Bro Tawny Son. Okay. Is he like a that. burner? Uh, yeah, cause he's he got like job interview stuff, so he's trying to. Yeah. No. For sure. Those are those are my favorite though. I love yeah. I love burners that are you know, fifty two percent pot. You know, just a little bit over. You know. He, Seems like a legit, unless I go back and look at my mentions, he's calling me like an idiot or something. But nah, I, I doubt <laughs> it. It's a joke, it's a joke. Yeah. Nah, you're, he's reasonable. But um, I do you yeah. think there's a trade hall that could equal Shohei Otani's value? I don't know. I, I'm a big, uh, I think you kind of get the sense like I'm a big jokester. I just like I can't think anything serious. Um, I don't know if I legitimately don't know if there's a team out there with enough to offer. Like, I like, I, I made a tweet saying that, like, Aaron Judge is playing the best baseball he's ever played. And, like, that now enters him in the category to headline a trade package for Otani. Like, it can't just be Otani for a judge. Like, it'd be Otani, judge, prospects, cat. Like, it, like I don't know. What do you... It, it's, a, again, it's like the problems of the rich. If I had the only iPhone in the world and I had to sell it to someone, like, what do you sell it for? Like, it, it's just kind of, what do you get back slash does any team have anything to offer slash are they willing to give up that much for i'll say two guys because he's basically two guys yeah i mean it, so i don't know it, there there are some teams i think that have uh the one i'm stuck on is the padres i would love a trade that gets us mckenzie gore cj abrams um you know there's they have some other guys too that I think could be factored into that, but whatever it would be, it would be the biggest trade haul in MLB history. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You know, take Mookie Betts trade and put it on steroids. Um, yeah. And I, I think any, I think I, if he hit the open market, someone would offer him at least a 10 year, $500 million deal. I think he's yeah, maybe and 50 makes sense. That's the thing too. Is like, I mean, you said Padres and it's like Mackenzie Gore, CJ, like I want top seat. And it's like, I don't think that's crazy to ask for. I don't think Perry goes to the table with the Padres and doesn't ask for Tatis. And like, I, and yeah, they might laugh, but it's like, all right, then like, you're not getting like, and maybe not like Tatis, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I might be, I don't know if you could pay these guys, but like, how, you, you don't go to the team to trade Otani and not ask for their top one or two guys. Like, and, and it might not work, but it's like, that's what you start with. Like, it, yeah, but you also put out a tweet saying like Tatis makes sense because he's young, sure. but like Judge doesn't sure. make any sense. You don't want a thirty-year-old guy in exchange for a twenty-eight-year-old generational, not even generational, sure. like all-time talent. Like, uh, uh, P had a good tweet out there where it's like you don't really like. I don't know. You don't really want. Don't get me wrong. I want prospects. I don't want it prospect heavy though because it's like I'm not. We're gonna put a. We're gonna put our prospects in this in this farm and. Just kind of hope they, like, we've seen how prospects do over here. Like, we, I'm not trying to take that. I'm not selling to gamble. Like, I, I kind of think if they do trade him, it has to be for MLB guys. And I think that you can, it's King's Ransom. Like, we, yeah, whatever we want, really. But I also so, don't think, well, for, for me, every whatever we do with Otani has to be done by the start of next season very least the trade deadline but that scares me because his value goes down significantly at the trade deadline for a rental especially he seems like the kind of guy who would rather hit the open market than you know get traded to a team and sign a massive contract immediately like matt olson did i i want this to be done this offseason i want to know what Shohei Otani's future is. I want to know if he's on our team for the next yeah. 10 years or if he is... I'm fine with rebuilding. Like I said, I, I would... Honestly, I'd rather be like a Pirates fan right now or an Orioles fan right now or, you know, even even a Tigers fan right yeah. now. I'd rather be any of these fans because, like, the, the, the Angels are built to disappoint every single season and they, there's just no end in that of that cycle in sight. You know, they always post the memes and, you know, the, I get my hopes up, I get let down, yeah, yeah, yeah. I start to believe cool. again. Yeah, and yeah. we're built for that. We are literally built for that. That is Char that is Artie Moreno's goal. That is his end goal, is to I keep that yeah, cycle going. It's, just, it's tough where, like, I mean, you think of this franchise and you think that, like, 
if we went to the ALDS and lost the series, we like what three one or four one? I don't know what they play, but we lost four one. Like people would be excited about that. Like we're oh, not excited true. about it, but people would be like, you know what I mean? Like it'd be like a positive, which it shouldn't be. But I, I get that. Like and it is tough. Like there's times <coughs> where I have to like the 2022 Angels are not my favorite. Right? They're not causing me a ton of like. And, and it kind of hurts. Like I respect that. You know, everyone that does content i i have a different level of like respect for them and like whether it's any any team any sport whatever if you're doing your shit you're putting it online and you're whatever so much respect for you um and, and like it's just hard because it's like we we can't like the team sucks I, I would love for the team to suck and then me just have an eight to five and then watch the team and not have to record about it or vent about it um so the 2022 angels is not my favorite but when I look at the overall grand scheme, like the overall trajectory of it, like I was there on the 2002 World Series day, talked to some of the guys, like it's just the, the brand and the A is like something that I like. And it, it is impressive how they're, people are saying like 21 was a bad team and 22 is worse. Like that is impressive. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's not over yet. So we don't know how the story is going to end, but you know, it, I always have to take a step back and be like, I don't, maybe, maybe this isn't my favorite team of all time. This isn't the 1921 Yankees or whatever, but it's like the the club is what keeps me coming back. And like the logo and the, you know, the sometimes game environments are cool, uh, you know, but I can kind of see people's argument on how they're boring or whatever, but that's just what I like. The two hats out front, the, yeah. the bats holding up the stadium sign, like that, that's the shit that kind of keeps me back. So, uh, to kind of throw some positivity in there. It, that, so if you do content for the Angels or any team, like just keep grinding. And uh, that I was going to say, like it makes it harder on us because I like to joke around a lot and I like to just kind of not take things super serious and I just want to have a laugh and compare things that shouldn't be compared. And it's, and it's hard when the team's not doing well. Like nobody wants to have a funny guy around when the team's not doing well. So, you know, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of, I guess we, I think statistically, even earlier in the year, like we were projecting like high numbers and we we're getting a ton of listeners and a ton of views and whatever. And like, I don't know, right when that 14 game losing streak started, it was like, hey, it hit a switch and about half the people didn't care anymore. And yeah, it sucks to see, but you know. I mean, luckily we have the greatest built in clickbait of all time in, in Shohei Otani. Just put his name mm-hmm. in, man. You got. It's it's a guarantee. Yeah. Like you could have zero subscribers, you're getting 100 views on that video. People people it's want so to crazy. see Shohei still, but you know, I'd rather. It's definitely more fun and it's easier to. Well, honestly, it is pretty easy to make content when we're bad. I'll be honest with that. Like when when we lost that game last night and I, I went live, Fair. it's Fair. so easy to turn the camera on and just Fair. you know just to completely tear Fair this point. team to shreds it's so i could i could do it for hours we've been doing it for an hour and a half and you know yeah. i'm sure we could talk all night if we want it is you know we're it's so easy to tear this team to shreds um but my god man i look at my tweets from you know before may 24th it was just such a simpler time oh. it was so nice but there that was team a video exist anymore. Uh-huh. there was a video i was putting off where i was going to do you know, MLB top 10, whatever. And I was going to go, you know, 10, 9, 8. And then when I got to, like, the Dodgers, wherever they would be, like, 5 or whatever, I was going to, like, uh, you know, like, national weather announcement, whatever, right? Like, so I'm talking, but you just see the number scroll on the bottom, and you just hear a beep. Like, it's this is a test, right? And then eventually it was going to go to Angels number 1. And I put that video off so long that it's not even fun. Like, because in May, you could say the Angels are the best team in baseball. And it was, like half a joke half like eh, you're not like i think the highest they reached yeah. this year was like five and like that was you could still be like yeah they're the best team and i wait i put that video off for like a week two weeks three weeks next thing you know like i can't can't even make that joke like and not feel like a complete idiot because they're they, they might be like the worst team right now yeah. and that's no, like that's maybe, not, maybe. it's not a hot take at all i i legitimately yeah, no, when i'm making my power yeah. rankings every week I just kind of look at the team now and I'm like, 
I, I, what, I think I ranked the Angels at like 22 or something last week, and I look at every team below them I'm like, could we beat any of these teams in a series right now? I'm not super confident <laughs> in it. Maybe the A's. I mean, when they beat the, when they beat the White Sox uh, a week ago when they won that series, I, I kind of like, I mean, they kind of reeled me back in. Like, and I was like, all right, that, the White Sox are a good team. Because we all knew that 19 game stretch was like, we knew it was hard. We didn't know it was 2 and 17 hard, yeah. but we knew it was going to be difficult. It was going to be rocky. And like, when we beat the White Sox, it's like, all right, we fired a manager. We got suspended. We fought, whatever. We're kind of coming back. We're like, we're getting on our feet, right? And we beat the White Sox. And I was like, all right, well, this is kinda, the step one done. Like, and then I think we went into that weekend and just kind of went back to, went back to the, you know, the me. I don't know. Not only it's like mediocrity, but like we went back into like the quicksand. And uh, I was hoping for a turnaround after that White Sox series. And you know, yeah. It's, it's, you, you see tweets like, the Angels have to win, have to have a seventy seven fifty win percentage to you know be competitive. And it's like, fuck, oh, that's just, hard. Like, yeah, you know. it's. It's not reasonable to ask that of a team like this, but, you know, it's just, like, I, I'm going to make a video at some point. I might do it over the All-Star break of just the amount of painful losses. You know, there was, someone said uh, the Angels once again snatched the uh, snatched defeat out of the claw, uh, jaws of victory. Yeah. They've had so many of those losses this year. There are so many losses where I can point to one thing and be like, okay, well, if this thing hadn't happened, if Shohei Otani's 405-foot pop fly to center field wasn't robbed, if, mm -hmm. you know, if Corey Seager's 16-mile-per-hour pop fly to the left side that Anthony Rendon was playing on the other side of second base hadn't have fallen in for a double, or, yeah. you know, if the Angels hadn't hit you know 607 mile per hour line outs that inning it's just been a combination of bad luck bad playing just everything it's just snowballing yeah no i hear you uh I, yeah this is fun dude uh, yeah, I, don't man. Gotta, I, I got like probably like 10 15 minutes left um, go. i got one last question if you want to no you're good bro I, I yeah i was gonna say next time you do one i mean i, I don't want to do too many vent lines but I'll DM you. We'll figure, we'll figure. I want. I want to do more of these. These are fun. Yeah, bro, hit me up. I, so like I said, I'm going to be at the Big A yeah. next Saturday. I know you said you're going on Friday, but I'll be there Saturday. So. This, this might. This might have changed my mind. I might. I might pull a couple of stars. All right, bet. Let me know. I'm always yeah. down. Yeah, if you're there, I'll. Uh, I, I usually only go to the games where they let us go on the field and stuff, just because. You know, my schedule, I'll be honest, like, I know Pete, I get a lot of heat because fucking Pete's at every single one. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, I'm an, I'm an adult, you know what I mean? Like, I have a job, and there's times where I come I come home, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the game at 5, and it's like, well, I'm going to take a nap. Like, I'm not going. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm so more of a Pete kind of guy. I get there right when the gates open, I bring my glove. I'm a glove guy. I know I know it's yeah, a no, hot take. Cool. I, don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate no, a glove. No hate for the I, glove I think a glove, guys. actually, like, the glove like i mean the glove haters like it's like dude have a little fun like yeah bro. i do not I, like i mean zach the, Campbell, uh, i'm a big anti i'm anti zach Campbell, right but everyone else like he's it, annoying i think it's actually a good movie he's... if you're going on a date with a girl you bring a glove i think that's like the funniest thing you can do and you're already it's like an icebreaker bring two gloves make her wear a glove like yeah. that that's just kind of how i see it and you know i i i like baseball because it's like you know i, I played it until i couldn't really like i played to high school and it was yeah. it was a sport for me, but now now watching it as a fan and like knowing that I can't do what Mike Trout does, and like sometimes I don't know I feel like we're kind of numb to like we watch Mike Trout fail the every day. When we see an average player do something like it, people freak out when I you know what's the catcher Kirk the fat guy, he's doing I'll well people Kirk. are like freaking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like he's doing well. People are like freaking out. I'm like, this is like the most middest catcher of all time. Like, uh, like yeah, he's cool. Congrats, good for him. But it's like, I don't know. I watch Mike Trout every day. Like, I don't want to watch Alejandro Kirk. Like, and that's my dig. Like, when we're good, I always talk shit on teams. Like, if whatever earlier in the oh, year we beat. It, bro. Do you know how fucking mad it makes me to see the Mariners winning baseball games? It's it's my toxic what? Drake, bro. I cannot be happy for the fucking Mariners or the Blue Jays or. Yeah, they're start, they're starting to teams. get up there in terms of like 
of being like, I don't want to say rival, but they're starting to like piss me off in terms of like, like there's one guy who just keeps, com like he commented during the whole fight and he's just been coming back. Don't get me wrong, they're hot right now and congrats to them, but they're, uh, I always said the Angels, like in the AL West, I never cared about, the Astros are too good to be a rival. I don't want to be a rival with them. Rangers yeah. were too bad historically, so I didn't really want to fuck with them. And then Mariners, same thing. A's was like, I guess the closest thing, but. A's fans yeah, are cool though. I've never met a, a, a douchebag A's yeah. fan, but I've met a lot of yeah, bad they're... Mariners fans. I have met, you know, every every fan base has their cool fans. I know cool Astros fans. I know cool Mariners fans, but I'd say there's... Same uh... thing with, like, the Rangers. Like, there's no bad Rangers fans. Yeah, I guess that's true. I don't know any... I mean, I will say, I, I posted a video when they signed Corey Seager and Marcus Semien, just roasting them, like, what the fuck are you doing? Why did you spend $500 million on two shortstops yeah. when you're not going to be good this year and my god bro those rangers fans were heated they were heated in that i mean i don't even know any, i don't even know any rangers fans if i'm being 100 percent honest like They're like two or three bro you live in, like you live in texas oh so <laughs> you cut out the prison i had to charge my phone and it turned on car play and it was some kind of so uh, yeah, like, I mean, you had to watch Joey Gallo for five years, like, shut up. Like, I, I don't know, you, they're not even a real team. But people can say that about the Angels, so I, it's, it's a double-edged sword of, uh... But yeah, I think the Mariners are slowly creeping their way into, like... I'm gonna watch the games we play them. I am going to thrive when they fuck up. And yeah, I'm gonna, like... And I'm gonna hide when we fuck up. Like, it's just one of those, like... I don't know, they're one of those teams that I hate, and... I hope they miss the playoffs by like one game and uh, then two. I can put like, and then I could just be like, Hey, well you didn't make it cause JP Crawford and everyone else got suspended and we beat you guys on a Sunday. Like that's, or we can end them like we did last year, which was also cool. Uh, that was, that was the highlight of the season. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, man. Um, yeah, I'll hit you up when I pass through and, uh, I'll be there this weekend. I think that's the only time I'm going to be there this year. I went to the Miami series and I'm going, I think I'm going to the Atlanta series as well. As soon as the all-star break ends. So wh where, where do you live? I live in central Florida. So about, central about Florida. an hour awesome. from the trop and then three or four hours from Lone Depot. And then like 10 so hours like from Atlanta. You like a lightning fan or something? No, I'm a ducks fan. I mean, uh, okay. a fair weather ducks so fan. I don't care about basketball. Yeah, I'm the... what, what are you doing in Florida? Uh, I mean, it's so cheap out here, bro. I can, I have, a, I own a four bedroom house. I used my parents had a college oh savings account. I bought a house with it instead. Fuck college. Out of boy. Um, out of boy. No, that's sick. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, just, I mean, because I, I, you know, to be fair, like I don't look at people that follow me. Angels wise, like I, I, I try to watch as much content as I can to try to see what other angels podcasts talk about. I think it's really helpful, and like. I, I didn't really watch your stuff, and then, like, now you've been hitting me up, and I've been watching it, and it's like, fuck, I need to, like, kind of, like, I, like, right now, like, my brain's turning where I'm like, all right, we need to do more with you, like, you, Pete, and I, Carl, like, so when you come out here, like, for sure, that's kind of what made me rethink it, of, like, all right, well, I can see you're grinding, I can see your angel stuff is working, and, like, I, I don't know, I'll try to, uh, I, 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 go, I don't have a ton of pull over there, and definitely, like, it, I go on the field when they let me, but I'm going to see if we can maybe, like, you know, get you on there for a batting practice or something, and you can be in our field pass or something. Um, yeah, no, that'd be stupid. I, yeah, I can't, it, can't so. promise that, but I'll be getting declined. Like, the process is you got to apply for every game, and, you know, for the most part, it's, you know, so we were talking about trading Otani, and one of the benefits of that, I mean, there'd be benefits and negatives, obviously. But if I could take a selfish benefit is that, like, I would be on the field a lot more because I lose a lot of spots to the Japanese media on, on like, a, you know, like the, the amount of requests that the Angels get because of Otani is staggering. So oh, we okay. fall, like, we fall to, like, the bottom of the list sometimes. Um, so if he was traded, I think those media inquiries would be a lot less. And, you know, I don't want him to get traded. I don't... I don't I mean, I, I'm, I don't want him to get traded. I don't. I'm scared of uh, a $45 million contract on this payroll. Um, oh, me too. But 
it's just one of those things that you know it, I, I really just want this team to be good like it'll it'll just be and like I said it's bad and I hate this and I don't have this I don't have this expectation for any other sport except this one like just get me to the ALDS like just get me there like yep have have a seven game a oh. seven game series in the ALDS lose game seven I don't care fine I would, we, kill like, for, made it. I would kill for a game Good. five loss in the ALDS <laughs> I, I forgot what I was saying. I, I'm a Bengals fan, which is ironic, but um, so you know how the, for years, the NFL for years, team. I was like, for years, I was saying uh, I, it'd be an honor to lose to the Chiefs because I mean they were they were like two and fourteen and then four and twelve, like they were just bad. And the next year they go out and get the right guys and start spending the right money and doing the right things and like and the Super Bowl and they actually beat the Chiefs. So it's like I. That's kind of where some of my hope for, hope comes from in sports too. Is like, I don't know, any year can really be, you can build it as bad as you can burn it. Like, um, and yeah, like I just think for all the all the content creators out there putting out stuff for the Angels, the right ones, right? There's some that are doing it, uh, Otani and Trout heavy. Like they're kind of just, which I mean, that's impressive. The two players can carry a content. Thing oh, like, bro! If I just posted Shohei content, it would. uh It's a very easy. <laughs> Every time I put I, Shohei's I name in a thumbnail, bro, it is. But just... but I always have like these thoughts of like I, I said it uh earlier, but I was like, who's gonna have it better than like guys like Pete when the Angels are good, or like you know guys like uh on bigger Angels accounts? I can't even think of any, but. Like, who's going to have it better than them? Where you have, like, the two best players, your team is playing well, you can really talk shit on every other friend. Like, no one's going to... I think the world doesn't want the Angels to be good just because how, like, how tough the fans will be on, like... It, it, oh, it would just insane. be impossible to get them to shut up. You know what I mean? So well, yeah, you saw um, you know, John Boy is a product of the Yankees being the Yankees, you know? That yeah, mean, uh... <laughs> I, 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 don't think, I don't think he's a big fan of mine, but he, his podcast and stuff is very successful. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the I think he's the biggest the Yankees. Yeah. And mm -hmm. He's great. Uh, are you going to be out here at all for all? You're going also both things, right? So I'm going to be I'm going to be at everything. I think I'm going to be at the Futures game, the Home Run Derby, and the game. So they're so. having a they're having a watch party in LA. For the all-star game i don't know if you're going to the actual game or not yeah i'll be at the game okay all right because i think we're going to go to the watch party so i was going to invite you if you if, but if you're going to go to the game go to the game that's way better yeah no i got a lot of plans for that week okay. i'm thinking about doing some other stuff like uh what's your buddy i think you were saying is that carl who does the uh the mini microphone at the games uh curtis interviews Curtis, okay, yeah. yeah. I thought about doing so, something like that at the All-Star game, getting, like, some, you know, AL MVP opinions from not Angels fans. Uh, yeah. You know, thought about doing that kind no, of stuff. I haven't decided yet, but. I'll be there for the Derby, um, I think. I mean, it changes day to day with my, like, I don't know, even my mental health. Like, I watch the Angels, they get fucking blown out, fucking <laughs> 7 to 0. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this shit. Like, I'm not going, so. I, I'm pretty sure I'll be at the Home Run Derby and then at that watch party the next day. So, yeah, the Home Run Derby, if I'm there, we'll, we'll do something. I think I think that's kind of something I have planned of, like, a gambling, like, not mini mic, but it's like, give me a winner. Like, who's going to win this thing? And then kind of see who, who it is. So Yeah, I gotcha. Um, I mean, I got that Thrive Fantasy sponsorship. I'll, they'll probably have something going for the Home Run good. Derby. Yeah, it's nice. I, I actually, I, I do legitimately like the app. They, I like the daily fantasy contests, you know? I know, like, DraftKings does it where you have, like, mm -hmm. you pick a lineup, and if they do well, you're, like, a millionaire or whatever. But yeah. um, the way they do it, it's, it's smaller payouts, but you have a better chance of winning. So, like, I've won, I think the last week I won, like, 25 bucks, 75 bucks, 100 bucks, 25 bucks, like, oh, yeah. consistently just. Grass and I've always right been, there, like, one fucking I, I had a jock peterson home run that was a home run in 29 out of 30 mlb ballparks except for oracle that's cool or else i would have had 50, uh, 500 cool. bucks so, you know so shit cool. like that happens i was one alec that manoa strikeout cool. away from 500 bucks Just so much shit like that oh those, you do like the, 
prize picks or whatever? Like, is that what it's called? So, uh, it's Thrive Thrive Fantasy. They're they're very similar to prize picks. Okay. Um, but you pick, yeah, you pick I didn't like know over and under a bunch yeah. of things. I've seen, I've seen those things, yeah. I've seen a lot of people doing them for, like, esports and shit, so... Um, but yeah, yeah, dude, I'm a big, I'm a big fan now. Like I, I, like I said, I haven't, I've watched some, I haven't watched a ton, but I, I'm a big fan. So like this yeah, I appreciate is, it, man. That's cool. So uh, I'll, be, I'll, be, um, I'll be keeping you out. Yeah, man. I'll be live tomorrow for the game. If you want to hop on and talk some shit during the game. Uh, it's a, it's a game want like it's a game watch. Oh, it's at nine though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, going live be. at 1130 yeah. Eastern, so. Okay, um, I'll text you. I, I, honestly, I might not even be up, but I'll text you. Yeah, you're um, good. Yeah, like I said, if you need anything from Pete or I or Carl Rocks in the outfield, like just uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, this is fun, dude. Yeah, bro, I appreciate it. Thanks for I, coming on. I suggest having I suggest having Pete on too. Pete and Carl. Uh, I guess Curtis, if you don't want to leave him left out, but. Uh, Maybe we'll do like a watch party with all of us or something, but I think that's because that's something we were pl- trying to do. Like we've been wanting to do that, but it's also like I don't know, not like we're gonna do it for the Orioles. It's like I don't want to sit there watching as we get their back blown out. I but you, man. you know, um, yeah, good shit. Yeah, for sure, bro. Hit me up. I'll uh, I'll I'll t- send you my number in the DMs or something. We can talk. Perfect, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming right, on though. Th- no, I, I, I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you for having me. Yeah, bro. Anytime. I couldn't, I couldn't see the chat. I want to read it. I want to see if anyone was talking shit. No, nah, you're good. You got to get a computer set up, man. I got my oh, dual I monitors have, here. I, I'm chilling. You just caught me off of a... I was doing a rec league hockey game. And I, you caught me right after I was driving home. So uh, uh, Next time, it. I'll be in, in a laptop and all that shit. So. There you go. All right, man. We have a good night. Thanks for hanging. Cool. You too, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. See you. All right. Let me fix this real quick for you guys. Shit. Well, that is going to do it for us today. Uh, you guys know I will be live tomorrow at... Let me fix this. I'll put myself just in the center right here. Uh, I will be live at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time tomorrow morning for you guys. We're going to be watching Angels versus Orioles. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me get to the chat here, see if there's anything you guys want to talk about real quick. Angels haven't won a playoff game since 2009. That is awful. That is painful. Please don't say that ever again. Um, I feel like the Tigers will finish with a better record than the Angels. I feel like the Angels might, if the Angels keep up the way they're playing right now, they could finish with the worst record in baseball by the end of the season. Um, so Ward, I think we should, so if we're talking trade candidates, Taylor Ward, Noah Syndergaard, and Mike Lorenzen are the three that come to mind. Outside of those, I'm not 100% sure, um, you know, anybody else would be, very valuable versus worth selling off you know um i don't think there's any chance we trade otani this year but i think the off season that's when that would become a possibility um they should fire both pitching and hitting coaches for a change i agree with that statement i'd say that was a success it was a successful one i'm glad uh max was able to come on man i've uh, been following rocks in the outfield and all the stuff they've been doing so Wanted to hit one of them up, see what's good, and uh, talk some Angels baseball, man. It's a good time. Ventline helps. I appreciate that. You know, that's what I that's what I'm going here for. I'll be honest. As a Vikings fan, I actually got I, I got these ideas from a, a Vikings podcast I listen to called Purple Daily. They do a lot of stuff like this. They have a vent line after every Vikings game. They do um, the pie chart of praise or pie chart of blame uh, if they win or lose. So I've been getting uh, you know I've been taking a lot of ideas and kind of testing them out with the angels market and seeing how it goes because i feel like we need event line more than uh pretty much any other team does so that's embarrassing that seattle's one game back from the wild card spot the, the seattle mariners are good they're a good baseball team man they had a, st- a tough start to the year they also had a really tough schedule at the beginning of the year but they're they're a good baseball team man i wish they weren't but they are they're a very good baseball team Let's see if i can get myself more in the center here there we go yeah uh i miss tim goss bro what happened to tim goss maybe he doesn't follow me on youtube watch them get watch them to get swept yeah tomorrow we'll be live at 11 30 eastern standard time to watch the angels most likely get swept by the orioles it's gonna be amazing four game sweep of the angels we're officially cooked 
Have a good night. You too, Zach. Thanks for hanging. Go watch Angels in the Outfield. We'll start winning after you watch it. All right, I'll, I'll watch it while I go to bed tonight. You reached 2K? I did reach 2K. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet, our new goal is going to be 5K by the end of the baseball season. We, it was 2K by the end of the year. Now it's 5K by the end of the baseball season. We're currently chilling at about 2030. So thank you guys for the support. It means a ton. A lot of all-star game content coming up for you guys. You know, I was talking, I'm talking with Max. We're probably going to do some stuff at the Angels game. That's going to be exciting. But outside of that, man, home run derby vlog, Angels game vlog, futures game vlog, um, all-star game vlog. All these are going to be filmed for you guys. I'm thinking about making some TikTok content out there. I haven't decided yet. Um, I've kind of neglected doing TikToks, but I might hire an editor to help me with that. Um, just a lot of new stuff coming up. So be sure to have those post notifications on. Leave a like on all the videos if you can. It helps me a ton. And uh, yeah, it, it, it means a ton to me, guys. If you do want to support the channel, sign up for Thrive Fantasy at the link in the description of this video. That one helps me a ton as well. Um, Thrive Fantasies. It's a good time, man. We're going to be placing some Thrive Lines in the morning for you guys uh, and sweating them out during the Angels game. So that'll be a fun time as well. Timothy invited me to Fall Guys yesterday. He's still kicking at least. I love it. Uh, but if they fire the coaches, who would coach? Uh, literally anybody, Maruka. Literally anybody. Uh, the the AAA coach is pretty clearly um, is pretty clearly good enough to coach. You know, Reed Detmers had a great start after spending maybe a week and a half down there in the minor leagues, so I think he'd be a good option. Shohei Otani coached Patrick Sandoval, and he had a great start today, so maybe Shohei could be a... Uh, interim pitching coach as well as a two-way player so a two-way player plus player coach that could happen how was 11 games over 500 that was so nice now we're 10 games under it's it's really this is one of the most impressive collapses in major league baseball history it's got to be up there man it's it's absolutely got to be up there all right i think that's gonna do it for us today we were live for about an hour and 50 minutes thank you guys to all you showed up thanks to all the new subscribers out there i appreciate you guys i'll see you all in the morning at 11 30 eastern standard time 9 30 for you pacific time zone people and uh it'll be a good time hopefully the angels win a baseball game if not maybe we'll do an impromptu uh vent session during the game so hopefully we'll have some guests on tomorrow we'll have to see i don't have anybody lined up so if you do want to guest star with me hit, me hit me up maybe i'll add some people to it but uh, i appreciate you guys hanging with me uh, it means a ton to me all the support you guys have been giving me i appreciate it and i'll see you guys all in the morning y'all have a great rest of your night and uh i'd say go halos but it just doesn't feel right it just doesn't feel right you have a good night everybody thanks for hanging